and welcome back to Creative Cooking. I am your happy host, Dr. Helen, and I am here to share some amazing meals with you today. If you thought the other episodes were good, wait till you try these. This is absolutely spectacular. Now, we are going to do some foods, make some foods that are really effective at lowering your blood sugars, your blood pressure, and your cholesterol. So make sure you speak with your doctor to make sure that you're able to do it because you may need to make some adjustments in your medications, okay? Now, that being said, let's get started on this delicious spinach artichoke soup. Soup's on. So here we go. Nine ounces of fresh organic spinach, 15 ounces of artichoke in water, six ounces I'm sorry, six garlic cloves, minced, one medium onion, finely chopped, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast flakes. We're also going to put in two and a half cups of our vegetable broth, a teaspoon of fresh thyme leaves, one tablespoon of non-GMO cornstarch, and one quarter cup of water. And then we'll use some unbleached, unrefined salt to taste. And we'll use a little fresh thyme to garnish. Now. Let's get started on this. This is the fun part. Now I'm going to turn my heat on my pot so that it can start heating up. And I like to do it over medium heat because I'm going to start sauteing my garlic and my onions. You know how we do it, okay? So we're gonna start this time instead of water, I'm gonna start with my vegetable broth and I'm going to just put a little bit in there to allow myself to have a medium to saute our onions and garlic in. Now, I like to use these onions because the onions are, are prebiotics and you, you know what probiotics, and some of you I'm sure know what pro, prebiotics are, but basically the probiotics are good bacteria that your gut needs to work properly. And then the prebiotics are really the foods that the good bacteria like to eat. So we're giving them some prebiotics too, okay? Because that keeps our gut nice and healthy. So I'm going to stir this around and I like to stir it around so that it gets a little translucent and it starts to release its flavors into the broth. Onions and garlic are just amazing and spectacular. There are people who are not able to eat onions and garlic, and I really feel bad about that, but I think that might be a gut issue, so you might want to get that checked out. But this is an awesome way to feed the gut both good bacteria and, the what, and what they want to eat, because we have all of this good stuff that's going to feed it in a way that nobody has fed it before. Okay, so as this gets into a little bit of heat, or as the heat gets onto it so that it starts to become translucent, I'm going to start with getting my artichoke ready. Now, I get the artichoke in water and not oil. And sometimes I will save the broth from the artichoke to make up my broth. And I would typically use a non meat source, not chicken is one of my favorites, not chicken, not beef, uh, kind of bouillon cube, and then make your broth from that using water. But sometimes I'll use the broth from the artichoke water because it's already flavored with the artichoke to make the broth and just adds a little depth of flavor to that. And so as I'm getting all of my onions and garlic sauteed in there together, I'm going to start to, with my hands or with my spoon, just kind of mash my artichoke because I want them to be smaller pieces. And it just makes it easier to heat. Now, this is a step that I just add in the interest of time. You don't really have to do this because you're going to, if you put it in your high speed blender, it'll do it for you. But this will kind of help this artichoke to heat up a bit faster so that we can eat it a little quicker. I am all about eating. I am a foodie. Yes, indeed. So here we go. Just smashing it, smashing it, smashing it. Now my onions look like they're good enough and ready to accept my artichoke. So I'm going to put the artichoke in here. 
and saute it in with the onions and garlic. Hear that sizzle? Now, if this were olive oil in here and it was sizzling like that and then it starts to have a little black smoke, then you know that, that what, the temperature that you're using is too high for the oil, but it actually starts to release toxins when that black smoke comes. And that's not a problem that you have when you're using broth because there's not oil. It's actually just the chicken flavorings that have been artificially made up from vegetables. So this is really good, okay? Next, I am going to put in a bit of salt. Take this, okay? I'm gonna put in my nutritional yeast flakes, and then I'm going to put in my broth here, and I'm gonna slowly pour the broth in. as I mix it in. And then I have some fresh thyme that I'm going to add to that. I remember the first time I made this, some friends had come to visit from North Carolina and I really didn't know what to make. I was, I was kind of at a loss as to what I was going to cook for them. And I realized I had some artichoke and I had some fresh spinach and I decided to make this up with the fresh thyme and they absolutely loved it. And I know you will too. That's artichoke spinach dip. There's all these different kinds of things that are used artichoke. And then fresh artichoke, I use that sometimes and boil it in some water with some seasonings in there. And we can just sit there and eat the artichoke right off of the stems. It's so delicious. So this is a great dish to make. Now, after I do this, it's been mixed together very well. I'm gonna put it in my high speed blender and allow it to, allow it to just mixed together so that I can kind of puree it a little bit and leave a little bit, some chunks behind. And then we'll thicken it a bit, okay? So I'll put my top on. Oop, there we go. Be careful and make sure your top is securely fastened. I feel like I'm on an airplane. Make sure your seats are securely fastened. All righty, now we have our soup. We're gonna put it back in and you can see some nice flex in there. And I'll drop my spinach inside because I want my spinach to be in larger pieces. And the spinach just needs to wilt. So you don't need the, the spinach in there in the heat very long because otherwise it'll turn out to be a lot browner and we kind of want it to be bright green. Okay. Now, as that wilts in there and becomes nice and happy with the artichoke, then we can start plating it and then tasting it. And I like to garnish this with, you know, I like to kind of repeat the flavors uh, in it in my garnish. So since I have thyme in here, I'm gonna garnish it with fresh thyme because it just gives it a nice little appearance. And if you want, you can kind of put another color, maybe some cherry tomatoes on top to kind of put a like pop of color in your presentation. Because when you're eating more healthfully, Presentation is everything because people automatically believe that it can't be delicious if it's healthy. So you want to present it well so that people are interested in consuming the product. And that typically is a good thing because it's going to be delicious. Okay, now here we go. The, the spinach is just starting to wilt now, breaking down. And then we're going to use our bowl to plate. And I like to choose a bowl that's kind of a nice color with it. And then here we go. Oh, gotta do my, my um, thickening agent. And my water is here. I'm gonna do a little bit of water with my agent here.
and this is just going to thicken it up a little bit. And I like to do my cornstarch separately because I find that when you put it in, sometimes when it's hot, it doesn't mix very well and you get little white spots in there. So I'm going to just thicken it outside of that. Here we go. All righty. Now this is good stuff here. All right, it's got a nice little texture to it with the spinach. And then as I plate it, actually I'm gonna use my ladle to plate it. We're just gonna put it in our nice bowl. Oh, it's so pretty. You know, with these bright green spinach leaves in here, it just makes it so gorgeous. It's so delicious. Oh my goodness. All righty. Look at that. And then I can do that last bit right there. How delicious is that? Okay. So that will just garnish with a couple of fresh sprigs of thyme. And there we have it. A delicious spinach artichoke soup. Now our next soup is tomato pepper soup. Here are the ingredients. Six organic tomatoes quartered, one container of cherry tomatoes, two organic yellow peppers, remove the seeds in the veins, and two organic red peppers. We're gonna remove the seeds and veins from those as well. We're gonna use two cups of not chicken bouillon cubes. It comes in a low sodium variety. Two tablespoons of nutritional yeast flakes, six garlic cloves, finely chopped, and three stalks of fresh herb. That can be basil, that can be thyme, rosemary, cilantro, even partially to uh, just round off the flavor. And then we're gonna just use salt to taste. Usually we won't have to use too much salt because the broth already has some sodium in it, so we won't have to repeat that. So in this recipe, we do not have salt. Now, because I've already roasted the vegetables and they're a little cool, I'm going to just heat them up in our pan. When you roast them, what you'll do is you will put in all of the vegetables and put them in a large pan. You're gonna heat the oven at 400 to just kind of broil them for, or to roast them for about 20 minutes. And the, instead of using olive oil on them, you're going to use some broth. Use some of that broth to give it something to relax in as it's roasting. I'm not sure if you can relax while you're roasting, but it's a vegetable, so I think they can, they can handle the heat. Okay, so I am just heating this through. These are just, uh, regular tomatoes with some cherry tomatoes. Now the first time I made this dish uh, was years ago as a matter of fact and being a mom of two and a wife I had to cook before I went to work. So in the morning before I hopped in the shower I roasted my vegetables, put them in in the oven, got went upstairs, got dressed, came back down, put it in the high-speed blender, and boom, my soup was ready for when I got home. And that was aside from having to make the lunch for the girls, so I had, I had to make something quick. So if you're out there like me, and you need to make something quick, then this is a really good one for you to do. Now we're gonna take some of our fresh herbs here, so I'm gonna put in some thyme and some rosemary, and I'll probably take it off of the stems just like that, just taking them to add to this delicious meal. Because the stalks of the rosemary is a little, little firm, a little woody, so I don't want the woody parts of it in there. And I'm going to just heat it through. And I'm not cooking because these are already roasted. So I'm just gonna put them through. And then now I am going to put it in my high-speed blender and then I'm going to just process it with some of my, not my bouillon, my broth that I've already made. I'm gonna process it in there. 
And I tell you, sometimes it's what's really fun is making up new ways of doing things. And that's something that I do in the kitchen all the time. And um, the one thing that I do when I do that is I'm like praying, God, please help this be good. God, please help this be good. And I say it just like that, please help it be good. Okay, so we're pouring some broth in here. And then I'm going to put my nutritional yeast flakes and I'm going to put my garlic cloves in it. Right, so that's going to give it that flavor. Now I'm going to put my top on securely. And then I'm going to turn on my blender. Now, you can puree this so that it's just pureed smoothly, or you can leave it chunky, and I've done both. So if you want to leave it just chunky, you can just pulse it. I did kind of a combination of both. And there you have some delicious tomato soup. Let me pour it into here so you can see what it looks like. See, I left some chunks in there, and I left, I left some flavor in there with those chunky tomatoes and some chunks of peppers and chunks of herbs in there. And that's what it looks like and is absolutely delicious. And because you can't taste it, I'm going to do it for you. Now, okay. See, when you pray, when you pray, God answers your prayers. This is delicious. Nice, delicious, the parsley kind of adds a little brightness to it and the rosemary and the thyme, absolutely delicious. We're gonna have to get to our next one too. We're gonna do our third and final soup for this episode, a sweet potato sage soup. I just hate when it's over because I just enjoy this so much. But sweet potato sage soup, let me tell you those ingredients. One large sweet potato, four large garlic cloves, one cup of coconut milk, one not chicken bouillon cube, two cups of water, one tablespoon of pure maple syrup, and one quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna also use three tablespoons of fresh sage and water to the desired consistency if we need more, depending on what you want it to look like, and one cup will be slowly added and then we'll just salt to taste. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our sweet potatoes, roasting them about 400 or 425 degrees. And it usually takes about 25 to 30 minutes to roast the sweet potatoes. Once your sweet potatoes are done, you're going to take them over and put them in your high seed blender. Now, I use these sweet potatoes because I like the idea of having this beta carotene that's not only good for your vision, but the sweet potatoes are also good for cancer, for its cancer fighting properties. It has a lot of what's called carotenoids in it, which is a type of antioxidant. And so that is really yummy for my tummy. And then I have fresh sage, antiviral, it's antifungal, uh, antibacterial. Uh, it's really delicious and adds a really nice flavor. And then I have some garlic to kind of round it out with some coconut milk. So I'm going to put my sweet potatoes in my high speed blender. They're already kind of tender. Okay, and then I'm going to put my a little bit of broth in there. I'm going to put in my coconut milk. my fresh sage, garlic, there we go, a couple more just because I love garlic. Then we're going to put in our cinnamon and then our maple syrup, just to add a little bit of sweetness to it. Okay. And I'm gonna add more of this based on how I want the consistency to be. All right, securely put on your top and then make it go. Now this is a pureed soup. That smells so good. You know, there are about 
three and a half cups in here. And if I'm going to share a cup with each one of my family members, I'm going to put it up to four cups and then mix that in. And then here we go. So I figure everybody gets a cup. There's four of us, so we'll do a cup for each and we're gonna pour it in. Look at that, nice smooth consistency. Yes, yes, yes. And then because we said that presentation is everything, we're going to garnish it with some fresh thyme. How's that? Now, when you are trying to eat more healthfully, it's important to build the flavor in the food. So just to make sure that the flavor has been adequately built up in this sweet potato sage soup, I'm going to taste it for you because I know that you would like to taste it, but you're not here with me. I'd like to invite you to come taste it sometime, but right now I'm gonna do it myself. Alrighty. Smooth. That, that is good. That is good. I can actually taste the cinnamon and it just kind of melds together so nicely. I mean, you wouldn't have naturally thought that cinnamon in a sage soup would be delicious, but it really is delicious. And then you just salt to taste, which I didn't do. But even without the extra salt, it's delicious. And look at what you get out of having such amazing, delicious flavors. You're getting this multi-level nutrition with the sweet potatoes, with, uh, with the sage being antiviral, with fighting cancer, with, with improving your vision. That's one of the problems that, um, that type two diabetics face is having visual disturbances. And so we wanna give as much to our bodies as possible to try to help with all of the wonderful things uh, to keep our vision going well with all of the wonderful foods that we're eating. And so it's really important to do that. So today we have made three spectacular soups. Today's show called Soups On really means that the soups are on. And this is a wonderful thing to have as a light meal. It's a wonderful uh, food to eat if you're on a cold day, if you're in the mountains and you just want a nice hot soup. These are wonderful. They're easily made. Take your high speed blender. As long as you have the right tools, the soups are easy to make. I want you to just enjoy them. So today we made three soups after I dry, wash, wipe my hands off. We made three soups today. We made this wonderful tomato soup with fresh peppers that we've roasted. We've also made this delicious spinach artichoke soup. I, 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 just, I just love that. And you see how brightly colored these foods are. That spinach is so nice and bright. That means that we've, we've reserved most of the nutrition in there. Then we have our sweet potato sage soup that we've placed with some nice cinnamon and maple syrup and sage with the sweet potatoes. Just an awesome combination and such a warming type of soup to have. I am so excited to have been able to bring these soups to you. You can be in and out of the kitchen in no time flat. What do you serve it with? You can serve it with sandwiches. You can serve it with salads. You can use it all by itself or you can just share it with some friends. <laughs> I like to eat them by myself sometimes, so just let's tell the truth because I'm a foodie and I love to eat. And because health is the new currency, health is the currency that we want to spend because it's wealth. And I want healthy to be the new normal. 
So as we work with you to reverse type 2 diabetes, I want you to recognize that these are the things that are going to bring life to your soul. It brings life because of the seeds, because of the, the antioxidants, the depth. All the plants are just life-giving foods. And that's what we want. If we want life, we have to eat life to stay healthy. Let's spend our currency in a healthy way. When you join our program for Reverse It, we'll teach you all of these things and even things that you thought you didn't even need to know. It's three months to spend your time reversing type 2 diabetes. And then our goal is to spread this message to like the entire world, to decrease the 29 million people who have type 2 diabetes in America alone. And I think that we can do that one person at a time. And if we can share what we know with other people, then we can get that message passed a little bit faster. Kind of like that old commercial, you tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends and so on and so on. That's the way we do it here, because we want our lives to be healthy and we want our families to be healthy. These are foods that you'll be able to eat with your family, not just because they're diabetic, but just because they enjoy eating food. So as you go on your daily life, learning more and more about what you need to do to stay healthy, consider changing the habits that we've so long had before to new habits, to changing over, to eating more, fr more plants, more fruits, more vegetables, less animals, because animals don't really offer us health, they offer us some food to eat. Uh, not to say that you can't get nutrition in it, but they just offer us food to eat. If we're really looking to spend that currency that we want, we have to make some changes because that health is currency that we want to spend. So let's make healthy our new normal. Join us again for our future episodes. We have some wonderful things coming up for you. We have another episode. Uh, some people like sweets. We have one that's uh, a, a dessert dynasty that's coming up. But before that, we're going to do some things with kale that you've never thought possible. So make sure you join us for our next episode called Kalicious. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.